All right, future finance stars. Today, we're diving into the world of floating rate instruments, FRNs, and money market instruments. Now, I know what you're thinking, floating rate notes? Money market instruments? Sounds complicated. But hang tight because once you get the hang of these, you'll see how they are like the Swiss army knives of the finance world. Versatile, practical, and essential for managing interest rate risk and short-term financing. So, let's get rolling. First up, let's talk about floating rate notes, or FRNs for short. Unlike fixed rate bonds that give you a constant coupon payment, no matter what happens in the world, FRNs are a bit more adventurous. They have coupons that float or vary based on a reference interest rate known as the market reference rate, MRR. How do they work? Think of FRNs like adjustable rate mortgages, but for bonds. The interest payments reset periodically, often every three months, based on what's happening with a specific market rate like LIBOR or SOFAR. If rates go up, so do your payments. If rates go down, your payments shrink. It's like having a boat that rises and falls with the tide. Imagine a corporation called TechX Incorporation issues an FRN with a quarterly reset based on the three-month LIBOR plus a quoted margin of 1.5%. If LIBOR is at 2.5% today, the next coupon payment would be based on a 4% rate, 2.5% LIBOR plus 1.5% quoted margin. Easy, right? Now, why would an investor choose an FRN over a regular fixed rate bond? It's all about price stability. Unlike fixed rate bonds, whose prices move inversely with interest rates, FRNs tend to keep their prices stable. That's because their cash flows adjust with changes in interest rates, reducing interest rate risk. Even when interest rates are bouncing around like a yo-yo, the price of an FRN stays pretty steady. It's like surfing. No matter how choppy the waves are, you're riding on top. Now let's get into the nitty gritty quoted margin, QM, and required margin. These are the two key components that determine how much return you're actually getting from an FRN. Quoted margin is the fixed spread added to the MRR in the FRN's contract. It's basically the bonus interest rate you get for taking on the issuer's credit risk. For example, a high quality issuer like Blue Chip Corp might offer a lower or even negative QM because investors trust they'll get paid back. Required margin, sometimes called the discount margin, DM, this is the spread that actually makes the FRN's price equal to its par value on a reset date. If the issuer's credit risk changes, say their credit rating gets downgraded, this margin adjusts to reflect the new risk level. Let's say TechX. Starts with a QM of 1.5% over LIBOR. If their credit rating gets downgraded, investors might demand a higher return, say 2.0% over LIBOR. If this new required margin is higher than the QM, the bond price will fall below par, signaling it's trading at a discount. All right, let's talk about how you price an FRN. The pricing model for an FRN is essentially a present value, PV, calculation where the coupon payments adjust based on the MRR plus the quoted margin. The model makes some simplifying assumptions like no accrued interest and using a 3360 day count convention. Picture this. You've got a five-year FRN that pays quarterly coupons based on three-month LIBOR plus 2%. 
If the current LIBOR is 3%, the next coupon payment will be based on a 5% rate. 3% LIBOR plus 2% QM. As LIBOR fluctuates, so do your cash flows, and this is reflected in the bond's price. Switching gears, let's talk about money market instruments. These are short-term debt securities with maturities of less than one year. Think of them as the cash-like equivalents of the bond world. They are used for short-term financing and have different yield measures than longer-term bonds. Treasury bills, T-bills, commercial paper, certificates of deposit, CDs, bankers' acceptances, and repurchase agreements, repos. Money market instruments are like the quick hitters in finance. They provide liquidity without the long-term commitment. Yield measure differences, money market versus bonds. Here's where things get interesting. Money market yields are typically quoted in two ways, as discount rates or add-on rates. Unlike bond yields, money market yields are not compounded. They use simple interest. Discount rate basis. Here, the yield is based on the discount from the face value. The formula might sound like a mouthful, but it's straightforward. Price equals face value times 1 minus the discount rate times days over the year. If a 90-day T-bill is quoted at a discount rate of 4%, you use the formula to find its price. A discount rate tends to understate the actual return because it uses the future value, FV, rather than the present value, PV, in the calculation. Add-on rate, AOR, basis. This is more like traditional interest. You add interest to the principal. Think of it as getting paid interest on top of your original investment. If a six-month CD is quoted with an add-on rate of 3%, you get 3% on top of what you put in, rather than a discount from face value. This makes comparisons between different money market instruments much easier when you're aligning them with bond yields. All right, so let's break down how yields differ between money market instruments and bonds, focusing on compounding, periodicity, and calculation methods. First up, compounding. In the bond market, yields are annualized and compounded, which means interest gets added to the principal, and future interest is then calculated on this increased amount. In contrast, the money market plays it simpler. The yields are annualized, sure, but not compounded. Think of it as earning interest on the original amount. Only, no compounding perks. Now, on to periodicity. Bonds are pretty straightforward. Their interest calculations stick to a consistent schedule across all maturities. Money markets, not so much. They like variety, changing up the interest calculation periods depending on the maturity of the instrument. So a 30-day bill and a 180-day bill might have different calculation schedules, which keeps things interesting but a bit more complex. Finally, when it comes to calculation, bonds use the standard time value of money analysis. It's a familiar by-the-book approach using formulas you've probably seen before. Money markets, though, they're the rebels here. They require non-standard interest rates and different pricing equations. It's not just plug and play like with bonds. You've got to adjust your approach based on the specifics of the instrument. Understanding these differences is key because it affects how you interpret yield information and make investment decisions in these two markets. So always check the fine print and know what rules apply where. Now let's compare money market instruments with bond equivalent yield, BEY. To make money market instruments comparable to bonds, analysts use something called a bond equivalent yield, BEY. This is especially useful because it translates money market rates into a format that bond investors understand, annualized yields. It's a three-step process to convert to BEY. 
Step one is to calculate the price of the money market instrument using the discount rate. Then convert this to an add-on rate. Finally, annualize it to get the BEY, making it comparable to bond yields. Suppose you're comparing a 90-day commercial paper with a discount rate of 5.5% and a 90-day bank time deposit with an add-on rate of 5.7%. After converting both to bond equivalent yield, you find the commercial paper offers a slightly better return, making it the better choice for a risk-neutral investor. And there you have it. FRNs and money market instruments unpacked. Whether you're dealing with floating rate notes that keep your investments stable during interest rate swings or navigating the quick in and out world of money market instruments, knowing these tools will make you a more versatile investor. Keep practicing these concepts, dive into some practice questions, and remember, in finance, flexibility and understanding risk are the names of the game. Until next time, keep that curiosity alive and those calculators close.